Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for another webinar from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. My name is Aaron Cohen. I'm a neurosurgeon, and tonight we're glad to have a special guest with us, Dr. Nicole Moswin from Mass General, from the Department of Neurorehabilitation there. And she's going to talk to us from a very, uh, uh, regarding a very important topic, and that's about recovery and outcome after subarachnoid hemorrhage. Nicole, thanks for being with us. And uh, after uh, going uh, through your slides, which I think would be about 30 minutes or so, we're going to go ahead and answer questions. So again, thank you, and please go ahead. Okay. Uh, good evening, and uh, thanks for having me uh, to speak at the webinar. Uh, again, as uh, Dr. Cohen mentioned, I uh, am Nicole Mosley. I am a consultant in the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. Uh, I have a specialization in uh, neuro neurologic rehabilitation, so I uh, see patients particularly with strokes, uh, brain injury, uh, some spinal cord injury as well. I uh, see a fair number of patients with uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, in, as a part of my practice at Massachusetts General Hospital and as well at Spalding uh, Rehab Hospital. So uh, I, um, I have the fairly unique experience of seeing patients from the moment they come in to Mass General and go into the neuro ICU to the time that they are discharged from Spalding Rehab Hospital. So uh, it's with that sort of background that I wanted to discuss with you uh, recovery from subarachnoid hemorrhage. So there are actually uh, several diverse influences that influence recovery uh, and affect recovery in subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, this slide refers to those. There are uh, three main groups, so I'll just animate this for you. There are patient factors such as age and sex, things we cannot change, uh, and also medical comorbidities. Uh, and there are aneurysm characteristics. Uh, the size of the aneurysm, the morphology or shape of the aneurysm, uh, the severity of the hemorrhage, so how much blood is actually in the brain, uh, and, um, and the location as well. Uh, treatment factors are also involved, uh, so how long it takes to treat an aneurysm, what facilities uh, are available, whether or not there is a neurointensive care uh, unit available or not. Uh, what specific ex uh, levels of expertise are there? Uh, so are there doctors that know how to coil an aneurysm or are there only doctors that know how to clip aneurysms uh, in the facility? Um, and then how many patients, frankly, uh, practice makes perfect. So um, how many patients the facility sees on an annual, uh, on an annual basis? There are two main mechanisms of injury in subarachnoid hemorrhage. There's a primary mechanism. Um, and the primary uh, injury represents uh, a magnitude of sort of interacting uh, factors, any of which can be treatment targets, actually. Uh, however, at this time in, in medical science, we really can't do uh, very much to uh, affect any change in the initial brain injury. It's sort of, it is what it is. Um, what we can do something about uh, are the secondary injury mechanisms, which uh, is what this complicated sort of diagram is that I don't expect you to understand, but uh, these factors are sort of the, pri uh, the primary focus of neurointensive care, and it includes hydrocephalus, which is uh, blood, collect blood uh, sorry, uh, fluid uh, in the brain, so it's a cerebral spinal fluid, vasospasm, which is when the blood vessels clamp down, seizures, metabolic changes, so changes in sodium or potassium levels, and uh, ICU-related uh, changes. The injury mechanisms produce a quantifiable changes to the brain. And to appreciate the microscopic changes, you need to obtain actual brain tissue. So get a brain biopsy, for example. That's not really feasible, nor is it necessary. Macroscopic uh, level changes, so things that we can see with the naked eye, they are apparent uh, even on imaging studies. So for example, you can see uh, that the size of the ventricles in this series of patients is larger. So these ventricles, this, this ventricle uh, diagram shows the ventricle larger than here, they're smaller. And the same from a side view, the volume uh, here is larger than here. And this is the space that contains that uh, 